programs are blown off course at Minnesota it was all there for the taking Sunday, and on more than one occasion. The chance to win three games in a row for the first time since 2012. The chance to move into a wild card spot in terms of playoff seating. The chance to go to games above .500 in November for the first time since 2003. And a chance to make a statement that this was a maturing, improving team that could win a high-stakes game against a good opponent on the road. No such luck. When Minnesota kicker Blair Walsh blasted the 40-yard field goal through the uprights with 9 minutes, 20 seconds left in overtime, those Rams victory hopes were gone with the wind. Winds that gusted up to 26 miles per hour at TCF Stadium, and some decisions made as a result of that wind had a lot to say with the result, a 21-18 loss that even the Rams record at 4-4. That played into coach Jeff Fisher's decision to go for a two-point conversion on the Rams' one and only touchdown. It's a decision rightfully second-guessed since it was unsuccessful and came on a day when a conventional extra point might have given the Rams a 19-18 victory in regulation. Fisher cited strategy and weather conditions in defending the decision, which came late in the opening quarter with the Rams down 10-6. I felt like we were gonna need as many scoring opportunities as we possibly can, Fisher said. And it was indicative of how the wind was. I liked what we had up, and I let the coaches know after I observed the wind. It's a long kick, and it was pushing the ball around. Whether it worked out or not, I would do it again. Under the new extra point rule, the conventional path isn't such a gimme, it's the equivalent of a 33-yard field goal. And the wind was a factor. There wasn't one field goal or extra point attempted into the wind Sunday. In fact, with the exception of Todd Gurley's one-yard touchdown run, all of the day's scoring came on the other end of the field the end of the field where kickers and quarterbacks had the wind to their backs. It was very strong, as you could see, kicker Greg Zuhorlin said. I don't think even the offenses were doing a whole lot going into the wind. We scored that one touchdown, which was good for us but it just seemed that going that way into the wind not a whole lot was getting done unless you were running the ball. Even so, Zuorlin was kicking field goals into the wind from 45 yards out during pre-game warm UPS. In addition, the Rams had tried only one two-pointer previously all season converting on a Nick Foles to Jarab Cook pass last week against San Francisco. It's not like it's something they do all the time. So was Zuorlin surprised when he wasn't called out to kick following Gurley's TV run with 109 left in the first quarter. No, he replied. I'm never surprised by anything Coach Fisher does. It's his call, and so I just go with it, and I'm happy to do whatever he tells me to do. I just do it. Zuorlin ended up making four of five field goal attempts at the other end of the field, with the wind at his back.
Among them was a franchise record 61-yarder early in the second quarter, and a 53-yarder with 12 seconds left to send the game into overtime tied 18-18. Minnesota, now 6-2, won the coin toss in overtime, and Vikings coach Mike Zimmer decided to take the wind, which meant the Rams had the ball first. After a three and out to start overtime, Johnny Hecker launched a 63-yard punt into the wind. An amazing boot on a day when three punts in that direction by Hecker and Minnesota counterpart Jeff Locke traveled 29 yards or less. But Vikings return man Marcus Strolls, one of the league's best punt returners, managed to tie up the right sideline for 26 yards to the Minnesota 49. I was hoping it would get over his head and get down before he had a chance to run it down, he Kerr said. But the ball swung back around to the middle, and you saw what he did with it. We had him pinned up against the sideline really well, and he's a dangerous returner. You never count those guys down until they're knocked out of bounds or on the ground, and the refs blow it dead. We were a couple inches away here and they're from flipping the field really big time for our team. Referee Ronald Torbert's crew missed an obvious block into the back of Rams coverage man Corey Harkey near the end of the return. But it was that kind of day for the Rams. With Vikings quarterback Teddy Bridgewater knocked out of the game with a concussion early in the fourth quarter on a controversial sliding hit by nickelback LaMarcus Joyner, the Rams knew Minnesota would rely heavily on the running game down the stretch. Even so, they couldn't prevent Adrian Peterson from running the Vikings into field goal range in overtime. An 11-yard run on third and 11 from the St. Louis 42 all but sealed the Rams' fate. Three more running plays got Minnesota nine yards closer to Thor Walsh's game winner. It definitely hurts, Gurley said. It's an NFC game. We definitely wanted it. It would have put us at three wins in a row. It would have had us a little hot streak going. But like I said, we didn't finish. So on to next week. With Minnesota stacking the box with extra defenders. Gurley was held under 100 yards rushing for the first time in five NFL starts. He had 89 yards on 24 carries, with Peterson getting the better of the matchup with 125 yards and a touchdown on 29 carries. As such, Peterson was only the second ball career to gain 100 yards or more rushing against the Rams this season. Washington's Matt Jones was the other, with 123 yards in Game 2. To lose it that way is rough, linebacker James Laurinaitis said. It would have put us in really good shape. We've got to learn from it in the next 24 hours and really just move on.